Okay, some help on 174 through 183. Here we go. On 174, what's the degree of this? Well, it's got a negative 5x to the third, a negative 2x squared, a negative x, and a positive 7. Well, this is a polynomial. You can't say it's a binomial because it doesn't have just two terms. Or a trinomial because it doesn't have just three. Once it gets over tri, you usually just go with polynomial. Okay, so it's got a lot of terms. Those are the number of terms. Okay, so it's got four terms. And what degree it has, oh, common misconception is that kids think you just add these all up. Okay, and this is a degree one. And this last one is a degree zero because it's like having an x to the zero there because x to the zero is equal to one. Anyway, uh, the degree is not an add it all up thing. It's just a pick the biggest one and go with that. So since this is a degree three, then that's the biggest, so that's the degree of this polynomial, is it's degree 3. Okay. Another way they sometimes write them is like this. And let's say this one's squared. And they say, what's the degree of that? Well, in that situation, if I multiplied this all out, I would end up with x plus 1 times x plus 5 times x plus 5, and by the time you were all done with it, you'd have an x to the third in it. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but when these two get multiplied together, you'd end up with an x squared, and then you times another x times that. So bottom line is it'd be x to the third. Well, you can tell that by here's a power and here's a power, and you can add them together only when it's written like that. Don't add them together when it's written in general form like this, or standard form. All right, so here's another one like I was just talking about there. What's the degree of this? This one, you can look at this degree and this degree and add them together and say this will be a degree 5. That's only because, again, if I multiplied this all out, x minus 3 squared is x minus 3 and x minus 3. And then x plus 1 cubed is x plus 1 and x plus 1 and x plus 1. And once I got done multiplying this all out, okay, I could even I could start here and I'd have the x times the x would be an x squared. And then I'd times it by another x would be x to the third, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. You see how? I could just add these together and say it would be, there'd be an x to the fifth in this, and therefore it's a degree five. Okay? So, I like to think of these as multiply it all out and get it in general form, and then what will the degree be of the biggest thing? And it would be fifth degree if I had it multiplied out. All right. Linear polynomials have what degree? Well, linear means that they're going to be straight. A straight line is linear. Okay, and those are the simplest ones we learned back in uh, middle school or elementary school where it was y equals x plus 2, for instance, and uh, anything that has a degree of 1 will be linear. Okay, so there's a little 1 there that, that we kind of ignored at the beginning when you were first learning x and y. But um, that degree of 1, first degree, is linear. Moving on, quadratic have what degree? Well, quadratic are the ones that look like this. x squared plus 2x plus 5, that kind of thing. And let's say it was sort of like this. It's a, it's a uh, parabola. And the degree of a quadratic, it's always got an x squared in it. So therefore, it's degree 2. And, and then the x squared term is always the biggest of the terms. All right, moving on. A cubic has what degree? Cubic is like y equals x to the third, okay? That's what cubic means. And so if it's a cubic polynomial, that means its biggest degree is a degree 3. All right, so x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 1, that would be a cubic, for instance. And its biggest degree is degree 3. All right. List the right end behavior of a graph for negative 5x squared minus x plus 7. The right end of that graph, I know, has to be heading downwards. No matter what it does in here, I don't even know what it does in there. I could figure it out, but all I know for sure is that if I look at the beginning and it has a negative there, then that tells me the end, the right hand end of the graph must be going down at the end. Okay? So the right end behavior is down. Okay? And that's because it's negative in front. So conversely, of course, if I had y equals positive 6x squared plus 2x minus 9 or whatever, and it leads with a positive number out front, then that means on the right-hand side, it must be going up at the end of the graph. No matter what it does in here, 
at the end on the right, it's going up. Okay, so it all, it's all about that lead coefficient, whether it's positive or negative. If it's negative, it's going down. If it's positive, it's going up. All right, what's the left and right-hand behavior of the graph of 2x to the third minus 2x squared minus x plus 7? All right, the right-end behavior, no, left and right-end behavior. The way you can tell that is by looking at the degree of the polynomial. This is a degree 3. I can tell that this has to be, this is, it's an odd number degree. The degree is odd. Not, it's not that it's an odd function. That's something totally different. But this is an odd degreed function. And if it's an odd degreed function, then I know that on the right end and the left end, they're going opposite directions. Now, I don't know which way they're going, but I know that they're heading opposite directions on their ends. So it could be going like I just showed there. You know, for instance, that's a possibility. Or it could be going down on the right and up on the left. I can't tell, but I know that they're going opposite directions because of the fact that this is odd. Now, what I just told you in the last slide was about how if I can look at this first lead coefficient and see if that's positive, then I can tell if it's going up or down on the right. Well, I know that this is, since this is positive, that must be going up on the right. So, logically, if the graph is going up on the right, and I know that it has to be going opposite directions because it's an odd degreed function, if it's going up on the right, it must be going down on the left-hand side. Okay? So the right hand must be up, and the left-hand side must be down. You can use that combination of knowing whether it's going up or down by the positive number in the front. That'll tell you whether the right-hand side is going up or down. And then if it's odd, you know they're going opposite directions. Or if this was an even one, like for instance, uh, y equals negative 6x squared plus 2x minus 7. This one is an even degreed function, so that means that both ends are going the same direction. They're either both going up or they're both going down. And this tells me that in the right-hand side it's going down, so this one must be going down on the right-hand side. And since it's an even degreed function, it must be doing the same thing on the other side on the left-hand side, it must also be like that. Okay, so you can tell a lot just from those, uh, the degree of it and whether it's a positive lead coefficient or a negative one. 181. Given, graphs of, given the graph of the polynomial below, locate and label local mins and maxes. All right. Well, if this was on my calculator, I could do this with second calculate maximum. I'd go to the left side of it, go to the right side of it, and hit enter, and it would tell me what the max is. Okay, but I can tell you, just by looking at it, that that is a local maximum right there. And that spot right there, it's a, it's a low spot, right? So that's a local minimum. And this spot is another local maximum. It's a, generally a high spot compared to the surrounding territory. So that's a local max. All right, so those are my local maxes and local mins. And uh, I guess that's all I needed from this drawing because I can't tell exactly what my maxes and mins are from, the, from my numbers being so rough. But if this was in my graphing calculator, I could use maximum and minimum under second calculate. And uh, it's by the trace key. And uh, that would tell me exactly where those points are so I could know where my local max and mins are. All right. 182. Extrema refers to all local minimums and maximums. That is true. So when I'm looking at this previous one I just did, uh, those are all extrema. The points here, here, and here, those are all local minimums and maximums, and so those are the extrema. Um, only certain books refer to it that way, but if you're asked for the extrema, they're asking about all the local mins and maxes. Okay. Next, given this graph, does this have an absolute minimum? Well, it's kind of a little bit vague because it doesn't have arrows on the end of it. It really should. Okay, and so we have to assume that this means that it's probably going forever uh, in the downward direction there. So, does it have a minimum? Well, some people would say it has a minimum and the minimum is negative infinity. 
I would argue with them and say, you can't say you are, your minimum is, an, is ever anything. It's not negative infinity because infinity is just a concept and you'll never actually get there. So I would say there is no minimum. I would probably understand what you meant if you said that the minimum was negative infinity, but it's probably best to say that this has no absolute minimum. Now it has a local minimum right there, locally in this area here, that's the lowest spot, but it is not the lowest of all of the spots. There is no absolute minimum because it keeps going forever, it never stops, all right? Okay, and that's all I have for you on this video.